Hello guys, this is Terry from Geeky Gaming TV coming at you with episode 6 of Yokai Watch 2019. I do want to apologize for this going up late. Mother's Day weekend has been busy, busy, busy. The Yokai Advisor was kind enough to send this to me about two days ago, give or take. I do appreciate him. He is amazing and I know a lot of people or subscribe to him but if you're not go subscribe right now and let's transition on I do want to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day weekend I had two different Mother's Day things to attend both for my actual mom and for my stepmom along with a baby shower for my cousin so let's get into the Yokai Watch episode our episode basically starts off with a little introduction thing that has a comedy skit. Basically, Silo, the white version of Blazion, was kind of just hanging out there with Jibanyan. Jibanyan then gets hit by the truck that always hits Jibanyan. We get a mighty transition to Nate's school. Nate is chilling, talking with his friends, and then all of a sudden he gets inspirited and for some reason needs to rush to the toilet. While rushing out the door, Nate lowers his fly in the hallway in front of Katie and her friends, which causes them to get all embarrassed. As you know, that is something you should never do, even if it's a situation that is unavoidable. But as the scene transitions on, Whisper and Jibanyan join him in the mad bathroom dash. Nate eventually gets to the bathroom and is in and out within 20 or 30 seconds. So Jibanyan and Whisper are both shocked and both of them doubted he washed his hands, but his hands were completely sparkling, shiny and clean. And we even get a, another quick transition back to Nate slash Kata's house. So as we transition in on his room, they're just kind of chilling out. Whisper is asking what's going on with Nate slash Kata. Like, you're acting different. Are you okay? Are you sick? Whisper then kind of imitates slash references Hulk Hogan with one of his face change things. Jibanyan seemed a tiny bit impressed with Nate's speed. And as they're basically talking, they are getting the feeling that Nate has potentially been inspirited by a yokai. Which Nate then kind of scans for and finds that it is Ciro, aka Whitish Gray Blazion. And then Blazion was summoned, and we get a little bit of a macho macho moment. I'm saying a macho macho moment because we, we see Whisper lifting weights, eating steaks, lifting weights, lifting more weights. Whisper is now a bodybuilder, guys, and I so miss Shadow Side <laughs> because as we transition out, we transition into another gag of Nate having his. Well, wait, before that transition, we see Jibanyan eating choco bars with a pile of choco bars behind him because. Anything with Nyan and it loves chocolate, apparently. So as we transition back, we see Nate get a little flashback screen of Nate with its fingers on his nose, which is caused by Snoddle or Snowtold. And we basically get a weird scene of Nate just rushing back and forth with his fingers and his nose transitioning back and forth, back and forth. We even get the fiery intensity scene, screen for crying out loud. 
So he must have been really going at it. He finally was able to have his nose be all sparkly and clean. And Katie is not impressed. Katie is actually mortified with what she saw because she entered the room, well, entered her room with the window, well, with her curtains pulled back, and Nate always has his pulled back. And we get to see the most disturbing Katie slash Fumi Chan picture I think I have ever seen in my life. Because no one likes Fumi Chan being disturbed. And as we basically transition on, we transition into the final Neon King Dead episode. And this makes me so irritated. I'd rather have 100 Neon King Dead episodes than the four coma things. Even though they're cute, they're, they're just filler. So we transition in and come on, Jibon Yon. Professor and Whisper just kind of chilling there, looking out of their little cave entrance, watching two jeeps go away and the zombies kind of being drawn towards them. Second thought, the zombies decided that the jeeps were no longer interesting and decided that they should go after Professor, a guy who has not been in a Nyan King Dead episode but was flown in to be a special guest actor because we just need Professor's wisdom and poop-styled guidance. So, our, our gang tries to get a little bit of high ground up on a, I want to call it an overlook because it's not like a cliff or anything. So they're up on that overlook, looking out upon the situation in the town, and they decided they have to get there. And Professor, being the genius bear that he is, suggests them cover themselves in poop and sneak into the city, or sneak past the zombies and get into the city. But upon the statement being made, Everyone is completely grossed out and is gagging and coughing and feeling sick because of it. But Professor's words of wisdom eventually convince them to mimic him. And they kind of do some weird stealthy moves. But as soon as they exit from behind a tree, the zombies then turn and begin to uh, have their attention on them. We then get a transition scene of Whisper acting like a hot air balloon and being used to lift them up and over the wall. But Whisper then has gas and then shrinks back to normal size. We are then basically faced with Robanyan F, Donanyan, Shokanyan, Badanyan, Nyananyan. I, I just added the last one because I just felt my my statement was nyan 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 So with all of our transitions going on, we get a fight between uh, those four: Whisper, Jibanyan, Komasan, and Professor. And Whisper, realizing it's too late, decides to bail. We get a slight Final Fantasy VII reference made by Professor Robanyan F. Punches Whisper when into the sky and then he gets inspirited and becomes a zombie. We then get a transition to the four coma scene. Our nice little melodramatic break, breaking up of an episode to add some kawaii for kami cuteness. It's very cute, but I'd rather have Nyan King dead than it. We get a scene of Komasan Komajiro in a restaurant trying to decide what to eat. Komasan then decides on the special, which is a little bit difficult to say. Once he finally does say it, they realize that the special was actually sold out this entire time. Wouldn't you hate that to happen?
being prepared to order something by saying a long chain of things. I know that Starbucks in Japan had this frappe that was, or frappuccino that was vanilla, but it was also some huge three line name for this frappe. So that's a parallel that stuff like that is hard to say. We then get a transition to Komakachan or Koma Mom speaking with Komajiro and Komasan about Komame, their little emoto. Both Komasan and Komajiro decide, hey, let's go look for her at Mount Fuji or at Fujisan. It's a popular tourist destination for everyone. Foreigners, people who live close to Fujisan or to Mount Fuji because there's so many attractions. Upon hiking through they stop to get water because Komasan is thirsty. He basically says the water is delicious. It probably comes from a spring like a hot spring or some sort of fresh water spring near Mount Fuji. We then get both Komasan and Komajiro asking for directions because they want to go to UNG or to an amusement park. They ride the roller coaster there several, 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 several times because when you're stalling out an episode to get to the end, what do you do but ride the roller coaster and then go to the spooky scary school where you are jump scared by Mirapole in no way. And we end the episode with the Komame shout like they always do. I feel like that's one of the only things consistency sake that has been going on with the past six episodes. I do want to say the opening segments have always been very fluid and very entertaining. The Nyan King Dead stuff has been good. The Four Coma stuff just... I, I, I just can't get past the fact that they begin the hype cycle going into... Uh, going from the first segment into... Then Nyan King Dead, and then you have a cooldown when you go into the four coma section where the hype just dies. It's just non-existent after that. Sure, the search for Komame is interesting because who knew Komasan and Komajiro, who is not a frog, have a sister who is also not a frog. So yeah, overall this episode is a solid A, and it's only an A because that opening segment in the Nyan King Dead was really good. I would actually pay $40 for a game based off of the Nyan King Dead, because the Nyan King Dead is nyan-tastic. And I'm leaving you guys on that. You all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and or evening, and I hope your week is full of blessings. Bye-bye, guys.